this is a, a strange way to start, but the, the reason I call this, this one uh, Dua for, did I say Dua for Rain? Uh, I'm going to show you this picture. It says, Blizzard Blankets a Terrain Parched by Drought. I don't know if y'all have been looking at your uh, press, uh, t uh, press TV. Uh, they got one picture of a boat sitting on a dry lake bed and it's showing the drought in Iran. Okay, they have a drought, uh, they have droughts all over. Look what that just happened in California. And the 10 years before that, it was serious drought. You know what I mean? Then, after that, they had one year of good rain last year, or year before last. And then this year, it was a big drought again. That's why all those, remember I was talking, Northern California, Santa Rosa, burn up the whole town. Now that's Northern California, up in the Great Area. It's north of San Francisco, up Highway 101. It's nice and green up there. That's all, all right up there. Humboldt County is up there. That used to be the marijuana growing capital of California, meaning the marijuana growing capital of, of the North America. They had those droughts. Now the droughts was all over the West Coast. And they had forest fires up in Washington, and, and when I would be coming across in Utah, 800,000, I don't know, miles away, 800 miles, the, the smoke would be crossing the highway, you know, from 700 miles away, stuff like that. <clears throat> now, this is uh, from January the 29th. This is the New York Times. And I'll read that the, the, it's a blizzard blankets, uh, a Tehran parched drought. Then it says, uh, God always testing people with various kinds of disasters. Ayatollah uh, Reza Ustadi a member of the Supreme Council of Seminary said in a sermon on January the 19th in the holy city of Qom, we ask God's forgiveness for our sins uh, uh, through rain prayers and entreat him to send us his blessings. But then prayers of hopes for the many in Tehran who are not religious were answered. A blizzard that uh, started Saturday evening descend on Iran, blanketing large parts of the country and taking everyone by surprise. Suddenly the situation had changed. Schools in many parts of the country were closed. It goes on and on. This is the deepest snow. Now remember, said this is Saturday. Just look at the picture. It's a drought throughout the region. And they make do a prayer in Coon on Friday. When they get up Saturday morning, has the prayer been answered? It's deep snow. So much snow they don't know what to do. <laughs> You see what I mean? And I'm going to get to the point in a while. But the West try to portray this as really uh, something silly, something haphazard. And to us, they made whatever you say. It's like the stuff we do. Okay? If we make do a for drought-stricken California on Friday, and the next day is pouring down rain. It don't make no difference why it rained to us, but should we take credit for making a dua or not? Do <laughs> you know what I mean? This is something where 
It's just another thing that shows how Allah's hand is over Iran. And it comes in religious terms. Because it was a drought. I mean, I was looking at, I could still pull up that same thing on the, on the, you know, on the phone. That is a boat sitting on, uh, it is another place, uh, you probably saw how Cape Town was running out of water. Right. You right. know what I mean? They say it ain't going to be no water by April. Right. Zero but day. It did, it did, it don't, but the rain don't start there until uh, March, April. It starts in May. Maybe they met at the Ulama or make a do it for rain there. Why not? Okay, the ironic thing is nobody here in California thought about, I mean, California here started making do up for rain in California. They had a 10 year drought. The Muslims never even thought about it. But here they are in Kuhn and say, hey man, it's looking pretty dry. We may, oh Allah, forgive us. You notice he did it the proper way. Forgive us our sins and shortcomings. And then, would you please bless us with rain? Everybody go home and go about their business and go to sleep and wake up snowed in. And see, uh, in Tehran, it wasn't too much snow around the hills. The snow, Iran, you can uh, be at the bottom of Tehran by the airport and you go up, 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 it goes up and you can drive up into the snow. You can drive up into two, three, four, five inches of snow from down here to up there because the, uh, it's right on the mountain top, you know, and so uh, a lot of terrain sometimes is snow capped and some of it is uh, not snow because it's, it's on the mountain. Anyway, I just wanted to start with that. There's another little thing here. This is from the government of the District of Columbia, Department of Consumer and Regular Regulatory Affairs. So they sent me a little letter today. I just got it and they sent this little red outline. This says blighted building response form. So I just breeze through the letter a little bit. Da, 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 da. This is at 5045 uh, A Street Southeast. Department of Consumer and Regulatory, Regulatory Affairs has inspected your improved, vacant, real uh, property located at 5045, okay, and deemed it a blight. This is probably, now that I look at it, they're talking about the property next to me where they uh, built those, because uh, 5045 don't have absolutely nothing on it. It's a lot. Okay, they didn't build those three beautiful apartments and they've been, uh, so it has inspected your improved, vacant, real property. Yeah, all I got to go down there is, uh, and, uh, I'll go down there tomorrow. Eh. Now that I look at it a little closer. That's not our property. I know, but they sent it to us and uh, <laughs> they will, uh, you know, uh, if there's any fines and stuff like that, because it says, uh, yes, my building is blighted. Please register my building as blighted. I will be taxed at class four rate. Uh, that means uh, they'll charge you 10% of what they think that the, the thing is worth. That means you'll be paying one, on that lot up there, one year they, they ran game on us and I paid $5,000 for that lot up there. Oh, return this form completely filled out and include registration fee of 250 So they want me to fill this out because they got our lot on here. And they got our number on here. What lot? 5045 A Street. It's slot 13, 
they got all our information on here. And it's uh, the property next door because it's improved vacant real property. There's no improvement to ours. They just sent me a thing a few months back say to clean up the property, and I did clean it up. Yeah, they just clipped the stuff and everything. Anyway, this is just a, a little, uh, okay, if I don't answer, they're going to put it on me. Yeah, and I'm going to pay it, and, and to get it fixed up and straightened out on the record, it'll take you $5,000 worth of work going back and forth and getting mad at them for doing it. Because they'll just keep on run, talking and they don't know what you're talking about and you got to get a stamp from this office and that office. But, but it's your mistake, huh? We don't know. We're, we're trying to do the best we can. Okay. What was this about? Defense firms aim for windfall. Defense firm. Uh, our poor people you know the way they kill them. But, you know, they send our poor people off uh, to get killed in these wars. They come back crazy. And uh, they say 67,000 people, that was the latest figure I saw yesterday or the day before, 67,265 people are by dying of opiates. It don't come out to 300 people a day. It comes out to about 200 people a day. There's a lot of people dying every day, all day, Saturdays and Sundays included. That's serious business. And you can't, uh, the people they blame it on, which should be sitting right there, is opiates. From the factory, from the Bayer Aspen Company and all the other white folks. You can't get them a case. What I'm aiming at is uh, what I was talking to a guy this morning, yesterday and today. One and the other, one Starbucks, the one and the other. They was both maybe having a little tough time. One has a Christian website. And uh, so, uh, yeah, if you want to push that up just a little bit, it's fine. So anyway, there was a, uh, oh, yes, yes, this, put a little noise in there. Y'all, I'm sure y'all can hear it, brother, but we want to make sure that there's a special hearing. No, 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 just let that boy run. And, because, uh, see, we are a revolutionary organization. And we don't have to have stuff clap and say start and stop from the uh, Even this, this whole thing was kind of uh, put together, you know, because uh, before I finish uh, getting really started, I want to mention something. I was, along with this, I was last couple of days, I've had a wonderful experience of, uh, remember we told you every now and then we hit the internet and stuff. So, uh, the last few days I've been going on the internet and I've been watching uh, lectures, uh, a lot of them of uh, Javad Zarif, Rouhani, uh, I always do a lot on the rock bar. And, of course, I get a chance to attend a lot of his, and I've been picking up uh, the last few days, even today, and at night when I finish mainly my work, uh, instead of watching TV news, I'll watch uh, some of those videos, which they're lectures from the uh, Defense Department, lectures from Charlie Rose, lectures from UN, lectures and the European uh, bodies and everything. And uh, it's very unique. So I was, I was watching 
two of our friends, uh, China and Iran. And I liked Iran, I liked, first of all, I started with China first, because China talked about uh, you know, going into the new era, the new time, new environment, creating the environment for progress and what we have to do to do that. And you can tell this, the Communist Party did a good job on this. The last 19th uh, annual uh, conference they had, they have every five years, this one was was really good. I watched the three hour lecture and a half hour lecture on TV. No, I don't watch it on TV. I watched it either on TV or... Yeah, I watched it on TV, China TV. And I also watched a lot of it on the internet. I read, what caught me was one night I was getting ready to go to sleep, but then he started talking and he talked about uh, the new era and socialism uh, with, uh, you know, Marxist-Leninism, Chairman Mao thought, and then they threw a little Deng Xiaoping thought, and uh, now they done put Xing uh, Xing Man, how do you pronounce his name? And, the new era with Chinese characteristics. In other words, socialism with Chinese characteristics. First time I heard this type of thing was UN speech of Hugo Chavez several years ago when he was alive. The time he got up there and said the shape the devil was up here just talking. And he said I ought to put sulfur, sulfur, suffering. You know, that's the uh, as Spanish, they get rid of the Catholics, they get rid of the devil, and so forth. Anyway, so he talked about a new socialism, not the old socialism. You know, this is what China China has done. Because we all say, man, this ain't no socialism. This is a type of capitalism. They say this is socialism with Chinese characteristics. In other words. We're doing what works for us. Now, all of us were, in our day, Maoists. And we followed the Maoists now. You could tell, a lot of our uh, guerrilla war, psychological guerrilla warfare is word for word from Chairman Mao, except his was guerrilla warfare. Right? And we changed all the tactics, everything from physical to psychological. That's basically all we did. And we negroized it. Couldn't lose. Because number one, who's going to understand psychological guerrilla warfare anyway? What is that? And then with negro characteristics, that's why China is successful. It was always like that. It said you have to study the laws of war, but you have to study the laws of the Chinese Revolution in particular. Because the laws of war are all basically the same. But the laws of war relating to China's revolution is specific. So you have to master both of them. The same with us. Our war in America is a classical David and Goliath struggle. But we had to innovate. Now, uh, people can play like they're not paying no attention. Brothers, the government, the people around the world is paying 157% attention, minute to minute attention to what we're doing. It is absolutely breathtaking. If it wasn't, they wouldn't be, uh, I got a call a day from the crazy people in California. And the main thing they push is that uh, what they're reaching at, trying to come somewhere else, 
is that I should stop saying all of those things about the white man. And I should stop, even today, as they did it before, you really, uh, I thought you was a gangster man. You ain't no man. You scared of white folks talking about you want to help white folks on opium and blah, 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 blah. Of course, I listen. I listen. I, when they call, I don't turn the phone off anymore. For I just turn, oh, please, just talk. I want to get so humorous. Whatever's happening, I have to take a half hour to get myself out of stitches. I actually like for them to call. I don't, I used to say, what? Turn the phone off. I didn't want to hear it. Not no more. I turned, oh, I'll be sitting there waiting. Man, read all the stuff here. I was actually reading this, you know. Strength training, da -da 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 -da, benefits of exercise. I got some real good stuff here. Um, the benefits of this and the benefits of that. And that child called and I said, my flow to down. I said, continue. And I don't explain stuff to them. But every now and then I say, I would like to, uh, you talk my, uh, I'm calling you, you said you was gonna help me. What you, what, well, I said, well, I, I didn't mean a day. I'm gonna help you a little bit. Don't you worry, I'm gonna help y'all. You can't, I'm just, this is unbelievable. But believe me, it's hilarious. So what has happened? I, I ran the system crazy. I ran them crazy. They are, when I'm talking about discombobulated, they are. Not just the, the, the dummies, but the system. I can tell by the way it approaches us. I can tell what, what they're trying to do. They may do one thing, that we do this, we do that open, then he won't do that. And you know, they're trying to catch up with psychological, they're going to play games. And first of all, we already have our stuff. If you go back eight or nine years ago, you can read all the stuff we talk about right now was all written then. It was all clear what it was going to do. And we all said exactly what we meant. We have a big aircraft carrier, we have a little engine and a little rudder, just a little rudder. And it takes a long time to turn that big old thing and head it wherever you want to go. You know what I'm saying? That's us against, can you?